Hello, this is Tim from C4 Systems. Uh, we're back with the Hydro ITM right here. Uh, we made a lot of changes this year, so um, we're going to make a new video and I'm going to tell you all about them. Uh, to start with, um, we went with a more compact case. As you can see right here, it is about a, a third less the size of the outgoing case. Um, other changes we made were new mounting brackets. It's stronger, um, it accommodates our new pole. The new pole is an inch and a quarter, but it's much thicker than the last one. So it'll be stronger, um, hopefully last a lot longer, um, be more stable in the water. Uh, new mount to accommodate the, uh, the thicker pole. Uh, another change is the transducer cable. Uh, we've been doing this for some time actually. Uh, we went down to 10 feet. Our customers asked, why is it 30 feet? So we we listened and we made a few changes. Um, another couple big changes were in the actual sonar mic. Um, some hardware is now stainless. We put dust caps uh, over the Amphenol connectors. The gaskets around the edges of the case and over every ball have also been uh, added or changed. So um, those are all the new changes. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and I will uh, put the hydro light together so you see how it goes. So um, first part is the mount. It's right here. I actually took uh, another mount and mounted it to the actual little bench behind me to save us a little bit of time. Uh, the mount's uh, it's very universal mount. As you can see the how thick this portion is so it'll attach to pretty much any gunnel and um, the transom part of it will move up to 90 degrees so even if you put it down on a little bit of an angle you can straighten out the pole. It's a really cool sturdy solid steel and aluminum mount. Um, if you've seen on our website you've seen uh, the Hydrolight on a jet ski, kayak, canoe, pontoon boat, Boston whaler, uh, you name it, fishing boat. So pretty definitely universal and a lot of different crafts can be used. So for this purpose, we'll, we'll use the mount behind me. Here's the uh, one and a quarter inch pole section. This is the transducer mounting bracket. It's all ready to go. That's what makes this kit um, so popular. And uh, you open the case, you add your GPS and your data collector and your survey. Um, that's why people like it so much. Uh, here is the breakaway transducer. It's right here. If um, you remember in, our, in the earlier videos, this is, has not changed except for the cable length. It's still our board, potted, made especially for us by Air Martin, a P66 transducer shell. Um, what makes our um, 210 kilohertz transducer different than, say, a fish finder, um, and what makes it survey grade is um, the way we interpret the return soundings. Fish finders want to find fish, so they um, look for, they have a wide beam and they look for small movements in the water column. We do not. We, we do not see any of that. We just track bottom. So we try to lock on the bottom um, and that's all our system's made to do. Um, it'll attach right on here. It's breakaway as you can see if you hit something, but for our purpose right now, snap it in on the bottom because so if I am traveling along in the boat, I'll usually hit something with that first, and uh, we'll know what happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually slide this up on the, uh, the mount right here. And very easy, we're going to go right on up, I'm going to put that up there. Um, now obviously most users will be using an RTK, Trimble, Leica, Topcon, Carlson software. You are going to input the um, rod height, so it would be the bottom of the transducer to the location on your GPS, which is usually the bottom um, portion. Um, you'll input that into the data collector. So now it doesn't really matter how far this is under the water. Normally, if you read the manual, you want the transducer to be the lowest part of the boat. So if the boat drafts one foot, you'd want this down at least, say, 14, 16 inches. So it'll, you don't want the return soundings getting deflected off of anything. Um, 
a little tip for when you're actually out doing the survey. We, you know the kit comes with three pole sections, but for our, our purposes here, I'm going to just use two. Um, normally, uh, you'll set it up like that. This is the actual sonar mic. We build this in California. Um, as I noted earlier, it has a lot of changes done to it. Um, what's great about it is just it's the simplicity. There are no buttons at all. There's not even an on-off button. It will attach to the pole. And and you will uh, plug it into the transducer and it's pinging. That's it. That's how simple it is. Just gonna pull this up and I'm going to plug it in. And as you'll see, I'm gonna show you actually, the red light is flashing. You can see that, I'll show you right here. So that means it's actually pinging right now. Um, we won't get any sounds because it's not in water, but it's ready to be used with uh, you know any of your systems. We're not going to get into the um, software setup on it. Uh, ah, that's a 5 8 thread, so it'll accommodate pretty much any GPS, and here's a typical data collector. Um, the support page of our website is loaded with quick start guides made by surveyors. They're detailed. They're great. Um, it'll set you up easy. There's Trimble section, Leica, Topcon, Carlson. Um, our user manual is at the bottom of the page. Everything that comes on the CD is already there. So what's great about all the new drivers is um, it'll actually take the depth below the transducer, apply it to the rod offset you input, um, and you will log bottom elevation as you're going. So it doesn't get any easier than that. That's uh, why it's so popular. Um, lastly, what do we have in here? We have a serial cable. So you could um, go hardwire from the uh, sonar mic to your data collector. So if your data collector only accommodates one Bluetooth, you can use this. Or if you just like hardwiring things, here it is. That comes with the kit. And lastly, it's just the charger for the sonar mic. Um, I recommend charging it, you know, definitely at least um, two to four hours before you take it out every time. Um, and it'll last you the whole day. Okay, and lastly, what I want to show you is a new product called the Hydrone. It's right here. You might have seen it in the magazines or videos. Um, this was a made for an option, you can add the Hydrolyte to this remote controlled survey platform. And you have a uh, remote controlled bathymetric survey system. Uh, you know, for those remote spots where you really can't launch a boat or it's too dangerous to put a manned personnel on, like a mine or a sewage treatment, this is a really low cost, effective option for the Hydrolyte. Thank you, thanks for watching.